Kevin Raposo here with speedyphotographer.com and today I'm going to be walking you through the brand new sky replacement feature in Photoshop. We'll be turning a shot like this into something like this. This feature came out at the perfect time for me because I just took that horribly overexposed picture with my DJI Mavic Air 2 a couple of weeks ago, but the sky replacement tool fixed it for me within three minutes and that's exactly how long this video will take to break it down for you. So I've already opened up this shot in Photoshop. I'm going to head over to edit then sky replacement. Photoshop will immediately detect the edge of the background and then replace it with a different sky. So the first step is to choose a sky that actually matches your picture. Photoshop comes preloaded with a few choices or you can drop in your own. You might want to consider dropping in your own because just about everybody in the world is going to be using the default ones. So because this was taken at sunset, I'm going to want to choose a warmer sky like this one. Now the shift edge slider allows me to adjust where the sky replacement transitions into the background. This helps me to blend the original elements of the shot into the sky. Warning though, if your sky replacement contains any any elements in the background, like this one does with the mountains, shifting the edge can make them appear in the wrong place. Which brings us to the move tool. Hit V to readjust the position of the sky replacement to line it up properly with the original picture. And if you zoom in and you move around with the zoom and the hand tools, you can use the sky brush tool by hitting B to carefully paint over and extend or reduce the sky area. So for example, if I move the sky down and I start painting, you'll see that Photoshop will try to blend elements of the original background with my sky replacement. Moving back to the main section of the panel, the fade edge slider controls how sharp the transition is from the sky to the background. Plus 100 tends to look good because it fades very smoothly and it still incorporates some of the clouds from my original shot. Now the brightness slider controls the exposure of the sky. You slide it to the right to brighten it or you slide it to the left to darken it. The temperature slider controls the color temperature of the sky. This is one of the biggest selling factors. If the color temperature of your sky doesn't match the color temperature of your picture, it isn't going to be believable. For example, look at what happens when I switch over to a blue sky. Photoshop tries to adjust my picture to match it, but it just doesn't work. Now you can use the scale slider to increase or decrease the size of the sky replacement in the background, and you can use the flip checkbox to flip the clouds horizontally. Flipping the sky replacement can help you to match the direction of the sunlight in your original picture, which transitions nicely to the next set of sliders, which are the foreground adjustments. Based on the sky you choose, Photoshop will automatically apply a filter over your foreground to try and match the color of your sky. And by default, it does a pretty good job with the lighting and color color adjustments. The lighting adjustment slider controls the brightness of the foreground, in other words, how much the sky is actually lighting up the scene. And the color adjustment slider can be used to add color which matches the sky. Where Photoshop doesn't always get it right is the lighting mode. Without getting into too much detail, here's what you need to know. If your background is close, choose multiply to retain most of the contrast. If your background is miles away, like this one is, choose screen to add brightness and simulate the haze that you would see in a picture when the background is really far off in the distance. Now when we hit output to new layers, Photoshop will automatically generate a sky replacement group folder for us with individual adjustment layers for everything we set, allowing us to fine tune and make further changes if we want to. So that's it. That's the brand new sky replacement tool in Photoshop in only three minutes. If you found this helpful and you want to learn more, head over to my online photography school, Speedy Photographer, to sign up for another hour of free training. And all of my training content is taught just like this. Quick, high value, and to the point. Also, don't forget to like and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video.